Hi everyone, it's Marcy here. I'm very excited today. I have Tracy Watts Serino on the other side here. Tracy, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Marcy, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. We love having you. And it's so spring-like there in the background. It's spring here too in Rochester, New York, but it's snowing. So welcome. Oh, same here. That's what's going on in Cleveland. The sun <laughs> is shining through, but it's the sprinkling of snow. We're like Some twin cities today. <laughs> Someone didn't give Mother Nature the bulletin about it being spring, but that's all right. We're working our way toward there. So we'll remain optimistic. Now, tell us all a little bit about who you are, what you do, what your business is. Well, I help female um, business owners and entrepreneurs really set up the systems and strategies, even like the mindset skills that they need to overcome any challenges in the area of communication, leadership, and communication and marketing. I do this in a way that allows them to sort of 10x their business so that they're saving time and using the little bit of time that we have to invest in our business so that they can get the most important things done. So that's like the root of what I do mostly. So I love that because Time is one of those things, right? That I think if you asked anyone, they would say to you, but this isn't enough time in the day. I say it all the, I say it all the time, right? There isn't that enough is, time. In the day. That's so funny because that was the constant thing as we, you know, interviewed people on my podcast, Beyond Common Business Secrets, as I would take on different coaching, everyone was saying, I never have enough time. It's like we're chasing this. So out of that need, we birthed something called the CEO Power Code, which is a program where we dive deep into it so that people get 10 hours plus back a week. It has really been the most rewarding thing I've ever created because it's so much bigger than just teaching someone how to make money with this one business strategy, really learning how to optimize your time it almost allows you to feel fulfilled. And that's like, I think that's the thing that like we're missing, right? So yeah. um, it, it's just, it's a labor of love. And I am beyond grateful to be able to bring that to female entrepreneurs because it's been needed for so long. So necessary. And people will always say to me, are you busy? And I always say, I'm always busy, right? But productivity is a whole nother topic. I would rather be productive in my day than busy, right? And I differentiate between those two things. So I think sometimes the reason why I don't have time is that I'm on that, you know, hamster dribble wheel. I'm not really getting anything done some days. Some days I will go the whole entire day and at the end of it, I will say to someone, I have no idea what I accomplished today. And I'm sure I'm the only person out there who you are not. I don't feel like you get anything done. So what would you say to someone who says that to you? Like, how do we start? No <laughs> one knows how to start, that, right? I never know how to start. That is that, that is the, the number one thing that we dive into. And it is all about how to have like, so here's the thing. We can't, we can't shame ourselves with that. Like, we don't want to end the day and say, oh, I got nothing done today. Like that is like the way right, you just do not want to leave the scene of your workspace without <laughs> celebrating one thing you did right today. One thing, maybe it was getting all your water in. Maybe, maybe it was, I put out a bunch of these fires and I won't have the same ones tomorrow. I mean, sometimes it's celebrating the one thing, but the goal is to have less of those days. And the first thing that I ever suggest to anyone is to, write down everything you accomplished. Because sometimes when you just have that moment where you take pencil to paper or pen, if you're a pen, I'm a pencil person. Uh, <laughs> I have to be able to erase if it doesn't. Um, when you start seeing it visually, you start to kind of give yourself more credit. And when our brain, it's like the neuroscience of our brain, when we start to see, oh, wow, I did a lot, it kind of forces us into rewiring our brain to look for where there's more opportunities that we get more stuff done. It's so amazing when you really think about how the brain really works. Well, writing it down is key. So I am a pen girl. I love colored pens. I color code stuff in different pens that just makes me happy and joyous and all those good things. But I will agree with you 100% is that I have all of these post-it note to do lists and then I have a book of 
things that I want to get done. And there's no greater joy in my mind as a business owner to cross it off. Right. Am I wrong in saying that? Like like a check. Yeah. Like check it off. I'm so excited. It's so amazing. Right. Even though I'll say once I crossed one thing off, I probably added five more. It doesn't matter. Um, I just, this is just a TMI moment, but I had to get the shingle shot when I turned 50, which was two years ago now. Right. And it's been on my post-it note for two years. I'm like, I'm going to get in there and get it done. (laughs) (laughs) I finally got it and crossed it off and everyone was laughing. I said to them, it's just one of those things where it was, it sat there. I know it's sat there for two years, which sounds a little nutty when you say that out loud, but, but it no. really kept forcing the issue in my mind. Hey, it has to get done, Marcy. You have to get there. Yeah. So I think writing stuff down sometimes does keep it at the forefront of things. That well, happen. that's a perfect example of something that like, it's not a priority emergency today, but it is that sort of maintenance on ourselves that, Hey, by you writing it down, it's like, when you finally go to the doctor, you'll be like, Hey, I need to get this done. Where right. if we just kind of let it, you know, brush it to the side and didn't write it down, it would be totally forgotten. So it it's important to group things together that way too. That's like another thing. One of the, one of the first things I like to do is walk people through, um, it's it, it's sort of a post-it exercise where you brain dump all the different things you have to do. And then we spread them out on the wall and break it into categories. Because when we can take this list of like 500 things that you might have as a business owner, or maybe it's just 80, but it feels like 500. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter what the number is, but when we put it in these groups and categories, you can get so much done faster because you're kind of doing it from this foundational effect where, oh, if I get this done, it knocks down the domino to where all of those are taken care of. Right. And it's so funny you say that because my post-it notes are grouped into things like, you know, one for each business and then personal. And so I try very hard to make sure that I'm crossing something off all the lists at least once a day, right? Because I don't want to end up crossing off everything on the personal list and there's all the stuff on the business list. So for me, it becomes overwhelming oh, if I don't group it that way, right? So okay, that, yeah. do you think that that is why grouping it is so important too? It makes it less overwhelming. Like they're in little bite-sized pieces. So it's not 500 things I have to do today, right? Well, I think that sometimes we can make it like, here's my to-do list, but really it's a project. And then you're like, so what is it going to take to get the project done? Because if you just put this one thing on there, you're never going to check it off. And then that can feel like that, you know, it's just like um, less than satisfying because you're not getting to mark mark it off. Um, The overwhelm comes from just continuing to put full projects down instead of, hey, okay, when we group things together, we can get a lot more done because we're actually not um, multitasking, right? Like when we're like clear, like we're going to, like you just said, you're going to get one thing done from this business, one thing done from the other business and one thing personal. You're being very clear and it's sending a like sort of a pulse signal to your, to your brain that you're like target focused the more focused we are in that way, we actually get more done. But if you listen to the world right now, they're telling you to multitask. Nobody's brain is designed to do that. Okay. Don't stop on that a minute, because I, that is an important point. And I want to hear more about this. We hear about multitasking. We see it in job description, ability to multitask. People want multitaskers, right? It is a buzzword out there. Tell yeah. me why that's so not. Helpful. It's like multifaceted problem solver is more what we, you know, you see what I'm saying? It, if you said, so if you were being interviewed for a position where that's funny that people still like, that's so dated, but that they say multitasking. But anyways, so it says multitasking. And if you were being interviewed for that and you could say, so do you want me to jump from task to task and never get anything done? Or would you prefer that I completed something off of the five different buckets that you want me to be well-versed in? Yeah, I'm with you. But I think that that's not, like, we just think you should be able to handle more thing, more than one thing at one time, right? And that's- I think it's like, it's more like 
you, they want it to get complete, right? So calling it multitasking is actually going to keep it from ever being complete, but can you handle multiple jobs? Like, so today we're doing this interview and then you're going to have to send it off to somebody to be edited or whatever you do. Do you see what I'm saying? Like there are multiple things with that, but you're not doing them all at the same time or it would never get done because yeah. we'd never even be able to hit play. Well, it's funny that you say that. So I want to say for a minute, especially for entrepreneurs, small business owners yeah. um, who work in their business along with working on their business, right? So we got to make sure we hit that. I So I am... I will start with saying me for years and years and years, I was trying to do both. Right. And it never really worked. Um, and this year I said, I'm going to really carve out time in my day times a week. And I'm only going to focus on marketing today yeah. or administrative tasks today or whatever that might be. Right. Maybe the first time ever I had my assistant covering part of a day uh, once a week. And I spend that time really being very specific in the things that I want to do. Because I found that's partly why some days I felt like nothing was getting done because I didn't have enough time or focus to complete that one that one item, that action item from start to finish, right? And right. that is probably a great uh, way to look at time saving as you're like, okay, well, that kind of busts out my day if I take three or four hours for myself to get other things done. But that's how we get more done, right? It's how we're right. more productive. Or am I wrong in saying that? Is no, that, that time is time saving. That is absolutely um one of like I'm a creative being and I had to in, in my first business when I was in the beauty and cosmetic industry is a lot of cat herding. It, it's trying to get a bunch of creative people to go in one direction. It not a job I ever thought I would have being a cat herder, but that is kind of what it felt like. So we had to figure out ways to really maximize our time and still have it be fun because creative people need that curiosity. And so putting a time block on your calendar that says marketing and, and sort of guarding and protecting it as much as you would a client appointment is so important because you'll actually get like your week or monthly content strategy mapped out. But if you just put on your account on your planner every day for five days and you're giving yourself 15 minutes, marketing, 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 what are you doing? Maybe posting or commenting on what you see I'm saying you're not actually getting anywhere. So time blocking seems counterintuitive because you're like, but when you're clear on, okay, this is the task I'm working on. That's going to be working on the business. It's the overall growth. Then I'm going to give myself these three hours to work in the business and actually take clients. Or if you're like me, I'm, I sneakily try to remove the admin tasks. They're my least favorite. However, you know, there's always the next budget goal for financial where we'll hire someone to take those over. So I do it with that joy in my heart. Like, okay, I'm making it so good that we're going to get this next person. And it actually helps you level up your goal then that you're going to hit that revenue goal to hire the next person. What I loved about that was, what I was going to say next was that it's true. There are some tasks that I just don't love to do, right? They're just something yeah. that I don't love to do. I don't love to call. Call it's one of my least favorite things to do. So I always put that off every single week. And I have found that if I really block the time out for it, then I force myself, right? Inherently, yeah. Marcy, you put this hour aside to do it. You just need to do it and get it done. And you'll be thrilled when it's over. Sometimes for me, that's more productive. There's more productivity in that for me when I pick things that I don't love to do and time block them and things that I love. Because if you love to do something, easier it, to carve out time, right? Exactly. You're like, oh, I love this. No big deal. So what else would you say alongside those things would be helpful for that individual, that small business? Like how do we carve out those time? Well, what, you brought up an interesting point. And it's, it, one of the things is when you're sort of, deciphering because a lot of it is like making the decision of where can I put my time? Like, what do I want to focus on? Right? Like when we do that, one way to do it is a question I ask all the time, what is closest to the money? So if making those sales calls is closest to the money and you don't love it and you don't have anyone on your team right now that can do it, guess what? You have to do it until you have someone else that can do it. 
Um, right? Because it gives you more option and choices for the next level, right? So we ought, we don't want to be the person that's like pushing papers around because that isn't closest to the money, right? True. Yeah. So you like some people will be like, well, I'm just so busy, but strategically, what are you busy doing? And this is where you have to build up some inner courage to either not lie to yourself or if you know you're, you, you're going to lie to yourself, this is where you do need to hire a coach, accountability partner, be in a, a group that you give people permission, like a mastermind to, to give people permission to hold you able to this stuff. This is where as a leader, you are the one usually, um, you know, where people are reporting back to you. So you're holding everybody else able to do their job effectively. But then you cave on yourself because all that willpower is used up. So this is where you've got to get people in your inner circle, whether you hire them or you figure out a way to grow that piece, because that's something we just, especially women, we have too much shadow and imposter syndrome that comes up that we need people to call us on that BS that we will force ourselves. Well, I, what I love you said about that is that whole what's closest to the money, what right? The because money? I think that that's, that's not always how we perceive priority, right? No. And I say perceive because the priority is true perception sometimes on a person's right. part, right? Exactly. And so I have never thought of it that way. And I, what I love about this is that I've taken this away with me is that I'm going to look every single week when I decide what I'm doing. Hey, Marcy, what is closest to the money? What does that bring you this week? That's awesome. What? As far as accountability partners and all of that, I love this too. And I will say from a standpoint of somebody who say I'm not a joiner and then I belong to all of these things. So that's not really true. That's me lying to myself. It was like, um, you, are, you have all, you have an organization of your own. I know I have all of these things, but I always, I'm like, yes, I know. It's one of those strange things, but, um, and I'm not usually someone who I feel like ever really needs an accountability partner per se. But after this conversation, I just was thinking to myself, well, what a great opportunity to network with other small business owners, right? So yeah. within that accountability piece, there are others who are probably struggling with some of that too. Or sometimes, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, you're so invested in what you're doing that it's difficult to see what's closest to the money, right? What the priority is. Sometimes just having a conversation with someone about what you're going, the challenges that you're facing or the things that you need to do allows another perspective to come into play, right? To help you decipher what it yeah. is that you need to do. Is that, do you find that's a, a big piece of having an accountability partner is a different perspective? Yes. Like when, you, like I will always pay someone to be a coach to me. It helps me be a better coach consultant because I want to always be growing, but sometimes it's like right here and I'm missing it completely. But having that trusted person that I give permission to sort of go into the no fly zone, like everyone else maybe is not allowed to fly there, right? <laughs> but you give a strategic person that you trust that permission to call you out on that stuff. I mean, it brings up a lot of tears. It's like right there, you're like, oh, I was doing that for a year. And if I just took this two-step turn, all the money flew in. And that becomes the next question of this is how many ways can people pay you? And it's not in the sense of like a greedy thing. It is the more we align with how we get paid, the more value we can bring, the more charities we can donate to, the better we can make the lives of the people that depend on us. So it's from a place of doing what's for the greater good. But when we energetically align to that, it saves us so much time and we get the more money flowing in. Okay. So let's talk about this for a minute because this is critical is anyone who owns a business, no matter if you're independent or small or large business. Yeah. We have some stuff around making money. A lot of people do, right? Yeah. I would be the first person to say, sometimes there's a little bit of negativity about being vocal, about wanting to make money. Not everyone embraces this wholeheartedly. So when you say energetically, I laugh because it took me a long time to feel okay about saying, hey, I'm successful at what I do. I feel great about it. And 
you know, we we support lots of organizations, lots of charities. Last year was a 10-year anniversary. We gave away $10,000. I gave away 350 coats and 200. Yeah. We did a lot with that money. But And that's not why I'm saying this. I'm saying this because I think sometimes when people look at it as being greedy, right, or it's a negative, but that's not what this is, right? Expand on that a little because this is not about money, 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 me, me, me. That's not what we're saying. Well, it's like, we have to ask ourselves this one thing. Why are you in business? Most often we're in business because we need to make money for whatever reason, to make a living, to raise our family, to pay our bill, like whatever it is, just because maybe we're doing it for fun. I have not, like, everyone's got a different reason, but at the end of the day, our, we're in business to make money. So I think we have to sort of get over attaching some kind of weird like guilt to greed because it's not that maybe it is for some other people from millions of years ago but women that I meet day in and day out there's almost like there's a money wound there where really to be really free and living your best life you have to accept the fact that you are valuable and that you're amazing at what you do and and let people give you money for it. <laughs> like, right. Know. Well, you're providing a service, you're solving yeah. a problem, right? right? Most businesses solve problems. And so That's I think it comes from a different perspective. I always say as notaries, we're public servants. I work from a place of being a public servant. The money comes to me because I work in that in that space, right? I don't necessarily work for the money. I work for the problem solving piece and the yeah. money comes to me for that reason. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs feel that about it, right? They're passionate about what they do. They love what they do. That comes across yeah. when you are talking to customers or clients, right? If they yeah. really believe you're a genuine individual and you love what you do, they will pay you because they will find value in the service that you are providing, right? Right. And that comes through when we're able to speak with courage about that will be, and you say it rather than, well, I don't know, I'll, I'll just send you a con. Like, do you say <laughs> it's a different yes. energy? And yes. and I know it seems odd, like how did we get here? But we knew this would be just a fun conversation, right, Marcy? But the thing is, is that we're talking about time. The the thing is, is that when we're able to bring in more revenue in less time, it changes so much in our life where we can take better care of ourselves when we just show up happier because now we can fit in a vacation. You know, there's, there's really, when we start getting really strategic about this, it, it's a gift to ourselves. Yes. But there's a ripple effect of the impact you create in your own family unit and then to the community. Right. Yeah. So I think sometimes when we can look at it through that lens, like so like that sort of self-care piece of charging what I'm worth is actually good for the impact I'm creating in the community. It comes from that servant's heart then. And, and it's much easier to do it. Just like you were saying. It's true. And it's so funny because even as a solopreneur, there was no greater joy again, other than use my colored pen and cross it <laughs> off my list. Check, is check. being able to hire someone and do the stuff that I don't like to do. Right. <laughs> Hiring a bookkeeper. Uh, working with a CPA firm, right? Getting sure. a business attorney, doing all of those things where when you start off on your own, or even if you're small, there's expenses that you just can't see at the time, right? You, you don't see that you can outsource them, but but bringing that money in, it is time saving because now you've allowed those experts, because certainly I'm not the expert in all of those things, to do what they can do, right? In a shorter amount of time, because that's their thing. And now I've taken back my role a little bit and not spending five hours a week bookkeeping when my bookkeeper only probably spends an hour a week doing it, right? I really had to have that mindset mm -hmm. of, okay, well, I'm spending money for a bookkeeper, yes, but I'm giving back five hours of my week. Yeah, like you're, you're buying back yeah. your time and you're seeing how a true professional that's like in her zone of genius or mm -hmm. him, you know, that they, they're, they're doing it fast and efficient where you're like, oh, <laughs> struggling and the value so it, comes it's back kind of right so nice that way is right? it do, she provides me such value that my paying yeah. that two or whatever hundred dollars a week 
makes sense to me. Hey, all day long, yeah. I will pay that to get my four or five hours. Yes. Now, right. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. So we talked about all these things. This was not the start of our conversation, but we definitely got to hear about courage, but I guess, and you brought up a great point, and I love what you said about that because it is critical that we convey ourselves in a way that we show that we have value, our service has value. So, and we brought that back again to how it relates to time saving. If you had to give any entrepreneur, small business owner, even the largest owner, a tip out there, what's the number one thing you think as an entrepreneur really um, they need to know about trying to save time? You, the number one thing, well, I have, to, uh, let me put it this way. I have actually, I have a guide I'll give you as a gift for everybody that, so they can like really see it <laughs> and sort of, it's a checklist that takes you through like five of my favorite time-saving strategies. But the first place to start is the clarity on why you're in business. I, it's one of those things that everyone wants to skip over because we want to go right to like, oh, I'm so excited about launching this, but spending a little bit of time, no matter how long you've been in business or if you're just getting started, does not matter. You can always refine this and getting clear about why you're in business. When you know why, it's easier for you to show up and say, you know what? I'm going to hire that uh, bookkeeper because now I can spend these five hours going out and selling the services I have, right? So that maybe I can employ the next thing on my list of who I don't want or, or what I don't want to do anymore and find that other person that loves to do marketing or whatever it is. So when we take that step back, even though it's counterintuitive, all the plates are spinning in the air. You have no idea what's for dinner. Um, people are calling you every left, right, and center. And you're like, I have no time. She's crazy. How is Tracy asking me to do this? I promise you, you take a five minute breath, you breathe and you spend five minutes. If that's all you have thinking about why, when you're really clear there, it starts to become easier to prioritize. So a lot of the noise will start to go away. I love that. And what I love about that is that, uh, Throughout the last course of this batch of chats, we have other uh, other experts out there. The top tip everyone has had is sort of that: know your company culture, know your mission statement, know your values, know what your business is about. Right? It's so interesting to hear that from experts in all the different segments because I think that that's probably the number one um, thing that does not happen as an entrepreneur is that you don't really know, right? You're like, I'm going to start this business. I love the idea of it, but you don't take the time. Like you take the time to figure out who's going to be my accountant, where am I going to get a copier from, yeah. where am I going to buy supplies from, where's my office going to be, right? Or where's all my the, logo? Here's my yes. here's my, con my content colors or whatever. All, yeah, like all the tangible things, right? My branding. But no one, I feel like, and I shouldn't say no one, I think a lot of times we skip over that intangible piece, Right. And that is the foundation where everything else flows. So it's so funny. I love that we did this today because it really wraps up that concept from everybody else. What is your business? What are yeah. you doing? Why are you doing it? Those things will help direct, right? The rest of where your time and effort goes. Well, if you can think of it this way, this is the best way I can explain it. You can't go wrong. There are no wrong turns. It's not that it has to be perfect. You just have to spend the time. And it's sort of like a balloon. If you don't tie that little bit of grounding to it, it takes off. And who knows where it's going? But if we just attach a little bit of that, it's like there's so much noise in the world right now that that one string allows you to be like, oh, yes to this, no there, no, nope, nope, nope. Because all of those will just be a distraction. I love that at so everyone get a balloon, <laughs> like put, it in your office, office. <laughs> like, put it in your office or a string, something to tie you down. Tracy, I loved everything about this conversation today. Thank you so much. It was so helpful. It gave me some great ideas and I hope everyone out there got some great information too. Thank you all for taking time out of your day today. And Tracy, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. This was so amazing. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you so much for inviting me and having me here. I just put in the chat for you the little guide that I made for your listeners. 
Um, it'll you. just kind of walk through. So they have those as a tangible item. I will make sure that you guys all get this to share amongst yourselves. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a great day. Happy spring. Bye. Thank you.